Um, hi everyone, my name is Ralf Peters and I'm happy to present the WDC schema.org table corpora which has worked on uh, together with my colleagues Alexander Brinkmann and Christian Bitzer, the latter also being in the room with us here today. Um, let me check how I can advance the slides. Tom? Doesn't work. Ah, okay. I just had a, it was out of focus. Okay. So, uh, a little bit of motivation, maybe first. So, I think all of you know what tables or relational tables look like. Um, so, uh, today we have a lot of table corpora containing millions of heterogeneous tables. Um, these are usually used by the research on, for example, table representation learning, data retrieval, data integration, usually for doing some kind of training and evaluation of machine learning algorithms. And um, yeah, here's a little overview of the existing table corpora that we have today. When you look at the names of the corpora, you can al usually already see where they are sourced from. So we have web table corpora, which are scraped from HTML pages. We have wiki tables, which uh, is a corpus scrape from Wikipedia, and also something like git tables, where, where the, source, uh, is, uh, the main source is GitHub. The size of these um, corpora is usually somewhere in the single to double digit millions, and there's also a quite new corpus tuplib, which uh, is actually quite large with uh, over 600 million tables. So now what's the shortcoming of these um, existing corpora? Um, first of all, they are heterogeneous with respect to their schemata and value formats, and especially this schema heterogeneity among the tables makes it quite difficult to combine um, data from multiple tables together, or for example, focus on specific types of entities and attributes. So if you look at the example here, we have two tables of um, airlines. and. Um, I, I drew with the arrows here some of the matching uh, columns. For example, in the right-hand table, the, the name of the um, airline is, yeah, the column is called name. In the left-hand table, it's called airline. Same for this airline code or IATA code in the left-hand table. So it's not completely trivial to actually match these tables uh, and, and find this without doing some kind of schema matching process, which then needs to be evaluated again. So this is where we come in with the WDC schema.org table corpora. Um, this corpus contains 9 million relational tables which cover over 44 different types of entities including products, local businesses and movies for example. And the special thing here is that we are actually using a single shared schema across these tables to describe um, these entities. Now I'm going to say a few words about where this uh, shared schema is coming from. So what we are doing is uh, we are using schema.org annotations on the web to build these tables. So schema.org is the vocabulary for annotating data in HTML pages. And today, uh, over 40% of all the websites actually contain these annotations as the search engines use them in their applications, um, which is an incentive for website owners to actually use them to mark up their data. This is an example of what such a schema.org annotation in an HTML page can look like. So here we have something called a schema.org product. So this is an entity of type product that is marked up, which then has several different um, attributes here, like the name, a description. We have a product ID and also some uh, rating information. And what we are doing now is that we are using these um, annotations. Um, more specifically, we start with the common crawl. So this is a large monthly crawl uh, of the internet. Um, in the example of the table corpus of 2023, we use the common crawl from October 2023, which contains 3.3 billion HTML pages from uh, 34 million hosts. And then we have a we have four steps, a four-step process to create our corpora. So first we extract this data from the common crawl, then we group the data by host and entity class, and then these two steps are followed by uh, two more uh, cleansing steps to yeah, um, cleanse these tables a little bit which then results in our final corpora. Let me say a few words about these four steps. So like I said, first of all, we need to extract the schema.org data. In this common uh, crawl version of October 2023, we find over 1.7 billion pages that actually contain these structured annotations from 15.3 million hosts, and then we extract them from these HTML pages. In the second step, we group them by host and class. So what we do in the end is that we create one table per host. So this could, for example, be the host imdb.com and the class of the entities that we are extracting is schema.org movie. So in the end, this table uh, will contain all the movies which are marked up on web pages of the host imdb.com. At this stage, we have an amount of data of 7.5 million tables with 1.4 billion rows. 
This is then followed by the first cleansing step where we want to remove listing pages and sparse entities. So first of all, we only consider entities that have at least three attributes to limit the sparsity in our tables. And then also we want to remove these kind of listing pages where you have a page that just lists a lot of entities where then usually the description of these entities or the marked up um, attributes of these entities are not um, that, um, yeah, that full. So to, de to detect those, we actually look on any page where we find more than a single entity marked up, if we can find any outlier there based on attribute count and value length, so positive outlier, so any entity that has actually a larger attribute count and a larger value length than the others, because then, you, then usually this is a detail page for this entity and all of the other entities are actually part of some kind of listing like similar products or something like this. And if we find any of these positive outliers, we just extract those. If we don't find them, then we dismiss this page completely. And at this stage, uh, we have 5 million tables with 429 million rows. And then in the final step, uh, we just do a very simple uh, content paste deduplication on, ex uh, on exact uh, matching. So we just really uh, uh, deduplicate on exact matches on all attributes. And we also finally we remove those columns uh, per table that have a density with less than 25%. Uh, this then leads us to the final size of our 2023 corpus, which is 5 million tables with 361 million rows. Yeah, and this is now the result. This is an example table uh, or a part of an example of, of a table from our corpus. Uh, so this is actually class movie from the host Netflix.com. So um, looks quite normal, like a relational table, unless you look at the actor col column. So let me uh, explain a little bit what actually happened here. So the thing about schema.org annotations is that they actually can be nested. So um, a movie can have a, an attribute, for example, actor, and this attribute can then have further sub-attributes. In, in these cases, of course, movies usually have more than a single actor, so we need to find some way to actually flatten this nested structure into a relational table, data, uh, table format. And we do this the following way, that if any attribute has sub-attributes, then we only add those with literal values as a list to our table. And this is what you see here, for example, for the actor column, where we then have a list of these uh, different actors that were sub-attributes of the actor um, attribute. Yeah, then let's have a look at the content of our corpus. So here's uh, s an overview of the number of tables we have for some of the 44 classes. And you can see uh, that we have some uh, head classes, like for example, product and local business, which are represented with millions of tables. We have some uh, classes in the middle, and we also have some tail classes like hospital and data set. And I think what's, um, uh, well, what I can say here is that actually for, for many of these entity classes, I think this corpus actually contains the most data for these specific entities um, that is currently available. Then also a short look into the attributes in our tables uh, at the examples of the product and local business um, classes, uh, entity classes here. So you can see um, that, for that we have some attributes that appear in nearly all of the tables, like for example the name, the address, or the telephone number for the local business tables. But we also have, of course, a lot of um, head, uh, tail attributes like the category for the products and the email for the local businesses, which only appear in around 11% of the tables of these classes. Yeah, um, the tables are provided for download in the JSON line format, so um, you can very easily read them in with your favorite data wrangling application. Um, we offer four download files per entity class. First of all, the top 100 tables with the most rows. Second, the remaining tables containing at least three rows, and then also all the tables which are not covered by points one and two. Finally, we also have some statistic files available that contain meta information about these tables, like uh, the detailed information about sa size, contained attributes, density, and so on. So if you're looking for something specific or you are looking for specific tables having specific attributes, then you can simply use the statistic files to search for which tables are relevant for your use case and then only uh, extract those from our corpus. Let's have a look at some of the use cases. So what can we actually use these tables for or what have they been used for already? So one example here is benchmarking. Um, there's the SOTAP table annotation benchmark, which consists of 60,000 tables from the 2020 version of our corpus. 
Um, so here we um, here um, column type annotation and column property annotation tasks were created by simply hiding away the column labels um, of the tables and then letting the systems predict these labels. And this works, of course, very well because we have a shared schema among these tables, so it's uh, quite straightforward to build um, the, these benchmarking data sets. Yeah, and this uh, benchmark has been featured in the 2023 SEMTAP challenge as well as has been used for fine-tuning table annotation systems. Next use case, uh, simply source of training data. So I mentioned representation learning in the very beginning. Um, the pre-training of these table foundation models, for example, requires large amounts of tables across a, a very diverse set of entities. Um, earlier approaches, for example, like the TURL model pre-trained only on the wiki tables corpus, which limits the breadth of available entities, entities a little bit. Um, so here we provide an additional, um, yeah, additional kind of kinds of entities, these four enti 44 entity types that we have in our corpus, with additional breadth and depth in the form of more data and also some more long tail entities that you wouldn't find uh, in Wikipedia. Um, second, we have question answering. The tables contain four million question answer pairs which you can directly use as pre-training data for Q&A tasks or for actually building Q&A benchmark data sets. Finally, uh, entity matching. So something that we can do in these tables is that we can actually try to find some identifying property for one of our entity classes. So in this example, it's for the local business class. We use the telephone number, so telephone numbers usually um, identify uh, the, uh, the different businesses very well. And what we can do here now is that we can simply link um, entities across tables by um, yeah, comparing these telephone numbers. So telephone numbers are also easy to normalize. There are many um, libraries available to do this. So if you have any kind of um, attribute that um, is easily normalizable, you can do something like this and find matches um, across the tables and simply build such uh, entity matching benchmarks. So this is easier than, for example, doing it over the street address where it's uh, a lot harder with the heterogeneity that can uh, happen there. For example, for products, you can have something like the product IDs that are marked up. You can use those for um, linking entities across the tables. Yeah, so let me conclude. So uh, existing table corpora, while they are extensive, do not offer this shared schema, making this uh, linking uh, of entities and attributes across tables quite difficult. This is where our corpus comes in. Um, we offer 9 million relational tables with a shared schema covering 44 entity types. And these properties make these corpora useful across a wide range of use cases, like, for example, like I said, the semi-automatic creation of benchmarks or as a source of training data. So thank you very much for listening. Um, here are the QR codes for the downloads of the corpora, and we hope they prove useful for your research. Thank you.